Discount Tire has just made tire shopping easier. Their touchless experience allows you to buy tires and book your appointment online. Then when you drive in, you can stay safely inside your car as the tires are installed. Discount Tire. Let's get you taken care of. Our goals aren't as out of reach as we once thought because things are coming back. And if there's anything we've learned, it's that there's no time like the present. At U.S. Bank, we take the time to understand you, to help get you to where you really want to be by getting to the root of any financial obstacle so you can move forward because side by side, there's no telling how far you'll go. U.S. Bank, we'll get there together. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Hello everybody and welcome to the Super J Cast. I'm Joel Abraham, joined by David McDonalds. Um... David, you know, most people have been talking about this European Super League thing. That's what's on everyone's lips. No one's talking about New Japan Pro Wrestling. All the, you know, the discords and the slacks and Twitter's just been buzzing with all this talk about football this week. And I know you, you, you know, you're not a bigger, biggest supporter of uh, the old soccer, soccer ball. But I would be interested to hear your takes as a, an outsider and a follower of uh, North American sports and what you made of that. Is this is this where I do my terrible uh, accent? <laughs> no, I don't do that again. People, people loved it. Oh, did you see? Did you see? Uh, Shingo did a Essex I did. accent. Yeah, it kind that of. Was so good. I did. I did see. It. He's trying to steal my thunder there. Steal my gimmick. Uh, no, I mean, you know. and again, all in uh, all, in good fun. I hope everyone took that at. Because um, you could make fun of me and my my. Ugh. Um, you know, someone asked me on Twitter how much, I can't remember who it was, sorry, but uh, how much would they have to pay? How many Manscaped subscriptions to get me to do the entire podcast with an American accent? That's what I wanted. I really wanted you to do that, to, to, get, to give that a shot. Um, I don't, and you could do like the most stereotypical ones. You know, you could do like your New York accent or your Boston accent. That wasn't my New York accent, by the way. It was just me making fun of people making fun of New York accents. Um or like a like a Texas one, uh, you know, like a deep South one. Um, I think I would I would pay one. I would pay you. I personally pay value you uh, to to hear that. Um, I mean, look, people look, people in the, the history of the show have paid me to do a lot of stupider mm-hmm. things than that. So there is precedent for it. Mm. Very true. Sorry, I'm just taking a swig of energy drink. I just woke up, people. Literally just woke up. Five well, shall, I'll tell you what, Damon. Shall, shall I give you my thoughts on this? No, 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 because I have thinking. it. No, no, I have it. And and here's the thing. I think this impacts the majority of sports. Um, it's – it's and even though most North American leagues aren't running on, under the same system as, say, uh, uh, British football – it's, 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 it, it absolutely shook the core of sports because what it did was it shook the core of sports. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. And again, I just want to make sure I have my facts straight. The Premier League itself was formed in kind of a similar way, right? Correct. Yeah, it was in 1992. They kind of broke away from the Football League. It used to be Division 1 as part of the Football League, but then they rebranded it, they changed the number of teams in it, uh, changed the whole sort of financial aspect of it, started calling it the Premiership, and uh, that's where I think a a lot of these problems started. Yeah, I mean, like, it feels like you, you already kind of set the wheels in motion for something like this to happen again. Like... Y- y'all got together and said, "Okay, these are our superpowers, our you know, our Premier League," and you broke away. And and again, I don't know all the financials, and I don't know all the and and how it may have impacted smaller football clubs. Uh, I'm sure it did. Um, I and again, the the league itself did have its its methods of 
making sure that you maintained a certain level of quality, right? Um, and there was always that element of, okay, the team that isn't – the underdog can win. I mean, we saw that with Leicester City, right? And we saw that um, to a certain degree with Man City before they became this gigantic mega power. Um, the idea of we're going to form this league – and we're going to uh, do this where we have no chance of losing. It doesn't matter how we perform. We're we're in this thing, uh, and we're collecting the billions that will be generated from it. Um, it kind of tears apart the fabric of sport. And, and and once again, to be clear, sport is no longer about the people. There is this. There is this idea that it's about the people who wear the sweaters and the jerseys and uh, support their team and live and die by every goal. There is that element, but no. And be very clear that there is not an owner that gives a single fuck about that. They care about how much more more money can I make, um, which is which is the disgusting truth of it. Because that is built off of the backs of the people who built those teams and live and die on those teams and the memories. Um, and, and people like to poke fun at people who are passionate about sports. But I, I don't think – aside from like junior Canadian hockey, I, I, I'm hard-pressed to think of – and maybe even like, like high school football in Texas – where the communities are so linked to their sports team. Like, Joel, you can speak to this better than I can, but from the little bit that I know, I mean, you have small towns that are identified by their teams. And, and, and it's, and it's uh, almost like a, a birthright, <laughs> you know? Um, and that's important to people. And the fact that that's, you know, somebody takes their, the heel of their shoe and, and rubs it into the ground because they want a, you know, a bigger house. I mean, again, these people are already billionaires. They just want to be super billionaires at this point. And that's on the backs of, the, of people who support the team. And that's what makes me ill. Yeah, I completely agree with you, Damon. I mean, this is capitalism. Isn't it? Is capitalism taking the next logical step? Um, I mean, we know it's, the Super League is not going to happen now, but it will happen eventually. And, and like you said, let's not act all surprised here. It's, it's inevitable because for decades, football has uh, encouraged and, and rewarded anti-competitive, monopolistic behaviour. And, and now the ultra-rich ghouls who own these clubs decide they want all of the money and don't want to share it. And I'm supposed to say, you're joking. Because, right. you know, it's a bunch of oligarchs trying to football-proof their investments. Right? Why let the unpredictability of a football match get in the way of your bottom line when you can just copy the NFL model and never get relegated right. like you brought up? Like, and, and forgive me for stating the bleeding obvious, but these owners do not give a solitary fuck about all those things you talked about, Damon, the supporters, the history, the integrity of the game. It's a business. Those things mean nothing to these people. You're a legacy supporter now, so get in the fucking bin. And the only thing that matters to them are Amazon and, and, and Facebook and Disney and Comcast. You know the companies that are going to pay for this thing. And you know, I'm not going to call it a sport because it won't be a sport anymore. And, and you mentioned it's been trending this way for a long time, but at least up until this point, there has been that uh, uh, razor thin shred of meritocracy. Like you said, if you can pull off a miracle like Leicester, then you get a crack at the big one uh, in the Champions League. Or if you shit the bed like Arsenal, you don't qualify for the Champions League. You don't get all that TV revenue. Someone else gets a chance, but uh, it, it just it doesn't feel like a sport anymore. Certainly not what they were proposing. It's it's not sport. It's content, isn't it? Mm. Content. That's mm -hmm. all it is. And and. You only need to look at, uh, connecting it back to wrestling, look at WWE to see a very similar thing happening where, where the people in charge have got absolute contempt for the fans. They do what the fuck they like. They're only not answerable to the shareholders, the, the, the sponsors, the other 
financial beer moths that are going to stump up the cash to show this crap you know <laughs> spoon feeding it to the the new fans like warm diarrhea and i'm sorry but you said it this is the chickens coming home to roost where when the premier league broke away in 92 no one did anything uh when they changed the european cup to the champions league no one did anything when uh, uh, monsters like Roman Abramovich and the likes of Sheikh Mansour came along with their dirty money, hoovering up these clubs and, and stockpiling players and buying their way to success, no one did anything. And the worst thing, when Qatar bought the hosting rights to the World Cup and are literally using slave labour leading to the deaths of nearly 7,000 migrant workers building their fucking stadium, no one did anything. And now all of a sudden we're supposed to say, oh, now this is too much capitalism. Right. The, the national governments and the, the national leagues, UEFA, FIFA, they all have plenty of time to stop this from happening. They, they could have implemented the, the German system, whereby at least 51% of the clubs need to be owned by supporters, so that if the people in charge try to uh, pull shit like this, then they get voted out and replaced, which is why you didn't have teams like Bayern and, and Dortmund getting involved. The other leagues could have easily done that, but you know they didn't. They were too busy carrying the huge stacks of money that the, the oligarchs were generating by buying these clubs and signing all the top players and cranking up all the TV rights deals but now they're all up in arms fuck off you know they created this monster Damon and now they're struggling to, to control it so all the, the chest stumping and the talk of sanctions and, and all that it's, it's too late it's yeah. too late and you know don't get angry at the owners that's like getting angry at the, the baby for shitting its pants or you know the scorpion for stinging the frog they're oligarchs this is what they do be angry at the, the people in charge of the leagues that have been allowing this process to happen over the past two decades and they're now scrambling around with their pants down because you know, someone's about to take away their golden goose. The, yeah. the, the writing's been on the wall for a very long time. COVID has just accelerated the process because, you know, we know a, a lot of these clubs are, are in the shit financially. Like yeah, but you know what? Then, Fuck that. You know what? When those owners were talking about, you know, we're doing this because of COVID, like... The idea of I can't have, you know, more money. And, and again, these people are – it's not like we're talking about a family. Uh, let's compare the family that's that's sitting there that, that longs for that Saturday night or Saturday afternoon, you know, whatever, or the, the Sunday morning, whatever, um, for their team to play, right? Let's not compare that to – their struggles with COVID, you know, to the billionaire who is losing uh, a little bit of money. Yes, absolutely. But will absolutely not be hurt by this at all, that that we're, we're doing this because of COVID, right? That made me ill. Well, I say doing it for COVID in as much as the, the billionaires aren't earning uh, as much billions as they would like right. to. You know, this right. is not some sort of altruistic decision. And it just, either way, it just, you know, these people are hell-bent on making it happen sooner or later. I don't think it's an idle threat. It's not a bluff. It's real. It's happening. Maybe not this year, but I'm pretty sure it will happen. It's coming back in one form or another. If you think getting a, a bloody nose like this is going to make oligarchs permanently abandon the idea that you need to wake up uh, you know supporters club writing a strongly worded letter isn't going to change that i mean personally i've got no interest in it. i hate the idea but i felt disconnected from arsenal ever since stan Kroenke took over and started running us like one of his american franchises i don't watch the games i don't spend money on the club i follow them through podcasts whether it's you know arsenal grinding out a 1-1 draw at home to fulham with goals disallowed because a guy's toe is in front of the last defender with this var bullshit or if it's us getting battered by Real Madrid and Juventus midweek, every week, my, my level of disinterest is the same. The whole thing, it's passed me by. It's of no interest to me anymore. So I, I just feel, Damon, that for every quote-unquote legacy fan like me that jumps off the wagon, there's going to be a hundred more from um, Asia or, or South America or whatever, or North America signed up or to, to like Amazon or Disney who are going to keep this thing going. So I, I'm not going to say football's dead. It's It's just been poisoned and, and mutilated by capitalism which is what capitalism does to everything it's going to keep going uh if they do launch this super league thing at some point in the future like it's some sort of human centipede monstrosity with all these founding clubs eating each other's shit as fans all over the world are tuning in on their streaming platforms to watch it and i, I come back to my original point this is capitalism eventually it will fuck up everything and anything you love, as long as there's money to be made, like the, <laughs> the people in charge, they won't rest, Damon, until they've forcefully squeezed every last penny out of it and leaving the rest of us in the dirt fighting over the scraps. But they do that, and and let's not, you know, it's that's every sports league does that, right? 
every, there, there's not a sports league that doesn't do that. Um, to the, to the to to the you know it's you have to be a billionaire um, or a group of billionaires to at the very least own a team. It's a very select few people um, that that um, have this money generating machine, and that's exactly what it is. It's a money generating machine. Um, you see that with the NFL, and you see that. I mean, to to smaller degrees, baseball teams and and basketball teams, and even a lesser degree, hockey teams. But that's 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 been sport since you know. I don't want to say the beginning of of sport, but like, the, I don't need, mean to seem naive, but it does feel that that innocence of being a fan for people who love football is lost. And I'm sure that there's like, there are old fans that, that remember the leagues before the premier league. I'm sure. I mean, we're looking at the nineties um, that probably hated every minute of the premier league for me. Right. Right. Because I think that was the beginning of this idea of, a monopoly and a and a um, like I just well, I would love to find out the impact it had on smaller clubs. And again, you correct me if I'm wrong because again, I'm not the most knowledgeable on, on this particular sport. But that that's the whole concept of the FA Cup, right? Of all these different clubs having a shot, correct? Yeah, that's right. I I don't know what the deposit is. It's something like fifty pounds. As long as you put your deposit in. Any team in the country, you know, pub team, Sunday league team, student university team, anyone can enter and anyone's got a shot at winning it. You just you just enter it at, at different points in the tournament. To me, I mean, look, that, that, that concept is fantastic. Like, it's just so unbelievable. Uh, um, and again, I, I do appreciate the fact that, that the Premier League has relegation. Like, I can't imagine the idea of relegation occurring in the National Hockey League or the NFL. Like, that would be great. Um, and there are teams that consistently, Joel, throw out buckets of horse shit every single year. I'm looking at you, Cincinnati Bengals, <laughs> right? Like, there are teams that consistently just there. And guess what? Their fans show up. They paint their faces they they support their team they buy their merchandise etc 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 um and they don't win and they it feels like they've had plenty of opportunities to win and there's really no punishment for that um look i wish i could sit here and, and say in the 80s it was blah blah you know what i mean but like it there are plenty of of people my age that will say that but it's been it's well. I tell you this: in the in the eighties in the UK, it was uh, uh, the the gangs, the firms, knifing each other up on the street, and people throwing bananas at black players. So I, well, you know, I don't want to say, oh, it was it was all better back in the olden days. It wasn't, but it just we're, we're moving towards different sort of problems, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, this it's. I mean, you know, you look at old footage of the National Hockey League, and you had fights between the players and the fans in the stands, right? I, uh, you can't get much more bush league than that. Um, so, look, it, everything changes, but yeah, this was a. I think this is a, a, a story, and I know we do a New Japan Pro Wrestling podcast, and eventually we will get there. Unfortunately, <laughs> um, I think this discussion is a thousand times more interesting than the New Japan Pro Wrestling discussion. To be frank. Uh, we uh, we're in a, in an age where the the there these billionaires are are riding on on the backs of the common man, um, and the fact that they just want something to enjoy. <laughs> That's really what it is. We just want something to enjoy on the weekend and support and root for and care about and. That's what they're making their billions off of. 
Thank you. Well, lucky for you, dear listener, here at the Super Jcast, we are a, a purely altruistic venture. We're doing this out of the goodness of our hearts. Yeah. We are not motivated by financial incentives or not get any. That's why or, or sponsorship, <laughs> anything like that. Which is why we have these uh, important messages to bring from you from our sponsors at Manscaped.com, Damon. Ah, we're going to roll right on in. And when I say roll right on in, I mean roll right in to cleanliness and roll right into smelling fresh. Uh, a specific part of a man's body that, to be truthful, Joel, is probably not the best smelling on its own, right? We all know, we've all been there, where you're kind of lying on the couch. You're like, what is that? Oh, that's me. <laughs> oh, no, uh, uh, oh, all right. Uh, again, maybe not the most fresh smelling after... Uh, a long day. Now, you could be, right? You absolutely could be. You could uh, know that and feel confident that when a romantic moment it starts, right, that you are in good shape. Because the last thing you would want is to have that onion bag of yours stink up the joint while the while your partner is more than willing to uh, take care of some business, if, if you know what I'm saying, Dusty. So, how do you get there? How does that happen? I know you're wondering. And the answer, of course, is Manscaped, right? With their unbelievable line of products to help you and your testicles smell the best. Let me, let me emphasize that. The best. I have had so many compliments from the missus uh, about the uh, fine products. You're going to say like colleagues from others. <laughs> yeah. You're at the office. You someone walks past. Oh yeah, you well, smell well, good. Well, Yeah, I walked into the deli and uh, they were like, "What is that?" I was like, "Well, maybe that's me, miss." And uh, let me let me let me show you what I got here. Uh, no silly gooses. Uh, the, 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 the products, here's the thing. It's not like you're masking things. It's not like you're masking odors. It makes you feel clean and fresh. You're out of the shower. Um, it's just another part of your grooming process. And again, with the, the shaver, uh, uh, the lawn mower, they call it. Uh, it's, it's, it's a shaver. And you think, oh, okay, it's a shaver. Okay. But it's a form the form of the of, of the actual shaver itself is small. It's lightweight, but yet it doesn't feel cheap or chintzy. Um, the blades are quality. Uh, they're not going. You're not going to get nicked. You're not going to get cut. And I know people will worry about that, and rightfully so, because we're talking about a paper thin uh, area where a lot of fucking havoc could happen. No, doesn't. Not for me. And trust me, I don't have sandpaper nuts. I got, you know, they're very, very sensitive. Uh, not a nick to be had. Not a cut to be had. And that's pretty great, right? It gives you a little confidence to take care of all that grooming that needs to happen down there. And no one, please let me be very clear. There's not a girl, guy, whatever, that uh, when they pull down those drawls, want to see a big... Unkempt, fucking David Cassidy looking m p push down there. Nobody wants it. Uh, clean it up, and that's what that's for. And again, the other the 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 the, the deodorant and the uh, the uh, sprays to keep you fresh and confident throughout the day. If you feel you need it's it's just they're just wonderful products that quite honestly you never really thought you needed except you knew you needed and there really wasn't anything for it until Manscaped came along. So again, enough talking about it, and now it's time for you to try out for yourself. And that's by going to manscaped.com, of course. Manscaped.com and put in that pro uh, promo code that we have exclusively for our listeners. It's Jcast, right? Jcast. If you put in that code, it's uh, a discount. 
And Joel, I don't have the discount in front of me right now. But I know off the top of my head, we're talking free shipping, right? And we're also talking 20% off. Am I correct in that, Joel? Bingo. Bingo, right? So I don't even have to read the copy. I don't even have to. I, I know. I know that with that code, Super JK, not Super JK, it's just JKS, JKS, right? 20% off, free shipping. And it comes right to your door. And it comes in a nice little package, right? It, it, it has, pardon the pun. comes in a nice little package box. Uh, get it all. Get it all. Get, get it all, right? You want the shaver. You want the deodorant. You want the, 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 the spritzer. You want it all because it all works and it all is quality and it all will make you feel confident when that romantic moment hits. Manscaped.com, 20% off, free shipping. Jcast is the code. Get on it. Support Manscaped. Support us. Support Manscaped. And uh, again, these are products that I use and I would put my name up against it. Absolutely, I would. I would recommend them highly, and I think you'll be very happy with it as well. Manscaped.com, 20% off free shipping. Jcast is the code. Manscaped. Thanks, Manscaped. And let's give some thanks to our fans as well who've put their hands in their pocket and dug deep to throw some, if I may say so myself, Damon, well-earned cash our way. Uh, Bash, big fan of the show, bringing the cash. We love it. Thank you very much. Samuel North, who wrote to us to say, I've been donating about £7 a month since September 2019. At the beginning of the pandemic, when everyone was tightening their belts, I tried to cancel it, but it didn't work, and I continue to send you money. I regret my moment of doubt, and I'm happily resigned to now sending £7 a month for the rest of my life, seeing as, apparently, I'm incapable of cancelling my direct debit. Please continue to do the show <laughs> so I don't have to change banks. Love the show. So, thank you. Samuel, what a legend. £7 yeah. a month. You know, not not just a one-off thing. That's amazing. Incredibly generous. We appreciate you, Samuel. And In Ring Art as well dropped us some scratch so we could share a pastrami sandwich. We love each and every one of you who put your hand in your pocket in these uncertain times. Gosh, we know how uncertain they are, Damon. But uh, we very, very much appreciate it. And we're very grateful to all of you who do that. So thank you so, so much. You have no idea how grateful we are. That, that, is, that is great. Thank you very much to each and every one of you. Uh, give me the names again, if you could, Joel. Uh, Samuel was, was uh, the uh, monthly donation, right? Yes, that's right. Excellent job. Fantastic. That I, I appreciate. Bash, again, appreciate. Um, what was the third one? I'm sorry. We had Bash. We had- the, the third one was In Ring Art, who In you Ring- might remember did an amazing sketch of us a few months yes, ago. Yes, I sure do. Thank you. I mean, that, I mean, again, I woke up at... F- five o'clock and then woke up again at five of six <laughs> scrambling out of my bed going, give me five minutes joe i just woke up uh that makes it all worthwhile thank you very much we appreciate that all right well let's get on to talking about new japan strong and so damon i, uh-huh. I uh, saturday morning logged into new japan worlds and it popped up i saw i was looking at the new shows tab and saw big graphic njpw strong great clicked on that Kevin Kelly, okay, a big show today. We've got the semifinals of the New Japan Cup USA to look forward to. A couple of uh, tag team opening matches watching it, and I was like, oh, it's Alex Zane. Oh, look, there's uh, Blake Christian, who, both, both of which have gone to NXT. So I thought, oh, I guess they must have started these tapings a while ago if they're still featured, but whatever. And then we get to sort of two thirds into the episode, and then Kevin Kelly saying, right, now we've got a big semi final with uh, David Finley against Tamatonga. And I was like, wait, hold on a second, that. That doesn't sound right. I realised I've been watching an old episode of Strong. <laughs> I didn't even notice. But I stuck through it, David, because uh, it, was, it was a good episode. So I was, I was enjoying it. But I did feel a bit silly. And maybe my addiction to Strong going a bit too far. But eventually I did manage to watch the correct episode where uh, we started off with a uh, very good eight-man tag. John Clearwater, Adrian Quest, Barrett Brown, Mysterioso beating the team, the Young Lions team of the DKC, Kevin Knight, Alex Coughlin, Carl Fredericks. And it was this match that made me think there they could be fertile grounds for Strong to have its own junior division. Maybe a, little, a cheeky little best of the super juniors USA when you got guys like Adrian Quest, Barrett Brown, uh, the Young Lions, people like DKC, Kevin Knight, Coglin, Clark Connors, uh, ACH, TJP, Leo Rush, people like that. Am I, am I crazy? Could they... 
put on a you know little one block best of the super juniors to to keep things going over there maybe even a junior title or do you think that'd be too much i don't know if that would be too much um no i think they have the bodies right and and again the, the we we talk about it all the time with strong is the idea of of being flexible and being able to bring people in and out um and then keeping fresh faces i think that's one of the things that i enjoy most about strong is the fact that um, it feels like you know you you're constantly getting at least a little bit of fresh faces to keep things interesting. No, I think they have. I think they absolutely can have uh, a best of the super juniors. Um, and, and again, a condensed version. I don't think it is going to be as long as maybe the traditional. But yeah, I mean they could pull that off. I mean they do the super Jake uh, cup. Um, oh, you know, I want to almost say here, but you know, it, it it's you know, it's not that far fetched. Let's put it that way. They have the talent; they can do it. And our second match was the New Japan Cup USA semi final, where Tom Lawler defeated Hikaleo in eight minutes fifty eight with an inside cradle. And this reminded me of a famous UFC match, UFC seven. You have to go back many, many wow. years for this one. It was Paul Varlands against Marco Huas, where Paul Varlands was this like massive, tall, muscular, beefy wrestling type, and Marco Huas was a, a smaller, not small, you know, he was a, a big, muscular dude, but a lot smaller than Paul Varlands, a uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy who was able to use leg kicks and uh, well, it was mainly leg kicks for that one actually yeah. to, to get the win and sort of chopping down the tree bit by bit. So uh, the the stronger, bigger fighter against a more more technical, experienced, tactical fighter. And that's what we saw here. And I'll always enjoy that. You know, it, it can become a bit tropey at this point because it's been a, a long, long time. But it's always good when it's done well. And an experienced mixed martial artist like Tom Lawler is always going to be able to, to do it better than most. So I like this one. There's a really interesting heel versus heel dynamics. But you, you kind of find yourself instinctively rooting for the smaller man as the underdog. And towards the end, the figure four on the ramp, that was a really believable near fall because I thought, you know, oh, okay, this is a good way to... Hikaleo can take the, the count out win uh, sorry the count out loss but not get too hurt by it but uh, he, he managed to make it back to the ring in the end and the the pacing and the structure I thought were really good here because after a near count out you expect a bit of downtime after that dramatic peak like oh he just made it back and then you know you let things lie for about 30 seconds or whatever before you get going back to it but as he made it back into the ring I just love the way that Tom Lawler got the, the near cradle the, the inside cr- cradle straight away on Hikoleo's bad leg, so he wasn't able to kick out. So just really creative finish there, really good pacing. So a short match, but I thought they, they put a lot into it. And even though he was pinned, I thought kept Hikoleo looking strong. He was in the ring yelling at Tom Lawler to keep going afterwards. So I thought this was good stuff. Yeah. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that that UFC match, because I think I was there. If, if that was the one that was in Buffalo, um, I, I'm, I'm almost certain I was there. Yeah, it, it was. It was. It was uh, in the, 1995, the, September 1995 in um, Buffalo, the yeah. Memorial Auditorium. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, yeah, yeah. Where the, the, yeah, the Sabres used to play. Yeah, I was there. Ah, that is, Me, that is amazing. Friend. What an amazing coincidence. <laughs> it is. Uh, that, uh, we went up. We actually, yeah, we went up. We drove up. Uh, me and like five guys. We drove up. And uh, that was the that was the show, and it's funny that you said that because when you were talking that, it instantly clicked in my head. I was like, yeah, you know, that's a good point. That it really was kind of like that match. Um, that's funny. That is funny. We actually went up to one. Um, it was like Niagara Falls, but they canceled it. Like the state of New York, like shut it down, and we didn't know. And we drove all the way up there, like an eight hour ride. Cancelled. We were like, what? <laughs> I'll tell you, there, there is a really good book about that from one of the, the original creators. I think it's Art Davey, and the book's called Is This Legal? And ah. it's a tremendously entertaining read. Like, I think there's potential for that to be adapted into a film. Like, it's such a great story. So, anyone who's interested in the early days of UFC, I would strongly recommend that book. Yeah. We were talking with, um, at that sh- the show, the first show, um, after the show, we were, we were talking with Ken Shamrock's brother. Um, I forget his name. Um, Frank, is it Frank? Sham- yeah, okay, there you go. Yeah. Um, we were talking with him. Um, for a long time actually, we were hanging out in the bar. Um, that's funny. That's funny. yeah, I do remember that. Um, okay. Anyway, uh, 
eight minutes, right? It was if, or less than ten minutes, right, for this match. Yeah, eight, eight minutes fifty-eight. Okay, so again, we say it a thousand times, but these matches are good and short and sweet and pack in. Uh, it, but it doesn't feel like they're shoehorning in stuff. Um, it's nothing feels super rushed. It's these these are these are just know what it is, and and I think this is what it, what what uh, I like the most. It scratches the my nostalgia itch for um, TV wrestling, you know, good TV wrestling, should I say, um, where you have competitive matches that um, have that time restraint where it doesn't feel like it's drawn out and it doesn't feel like it's overstaying its welcome. Um, trust me, I'm a huge fan too of um, Lawler's uh, those those clubs <laughs> that he brings, those iron sheet clubs. I, I when I was a kid, I was always like, "What? Like that doesn't look hard." And like I just didn't look like it was difficult. And then, have you ever used one of those? I haven't. They look tremendously heavy. The way he swings yeah. it around over his head is very impressive. Yeah, it's not easy. <laughs> it's, I couldn't even get him off the ground. Let's put it that way. Um, but I always just remember being a kid, being like, "This not why? What is that? This doesn't seem hard." But you know, it's, it's hard. Um, I think we all I, did. We both predict Lawler winning. It makes sense, but I was disappointed. Mm. I did want to see Hikaleo go on. Well, I think that's that's a really great uh, testament to how well Tickler is doing that. You wanted to see him in the final because when he was working in New Japan uh, domestically in Japan, he was very raw, but I think he's really, you know, we talk about him every week. He's really starting to, to get into his stride here in Strong. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, again, I, I, we talked about it last week, how he's going to slide right on in, in Bullet Club and be the big man. Like, he, this is, there's no doubt. That that that's his his path to greatness. Um, yeah, I like him. I mean, I, I, also I, sorry, he's he's an incredibly good looking guy as well. Very yeah. very handsome and great hair. So you know, I don't want to. Uh, maybe it would be doing a disservice to him to say he's going to be the next bad luck father. No, I'm not saying father no, no, is a, an yeah. unattractive man, but he could learn as a hunk. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I mean, he's 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 yes, yes. But, you know. Um, and not that I'm an authority. Get, but get yes. doing one of those photo books. <laughs> <laughs> Him and Ishimori in their underwear yeah. in the hotel room. Oh boy, Ooh, Ishimori's like, what? <laughs> what am I doing? Um, I mean, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag here. This is my favorite wrestling of the, of the week. I love. I love. I really enjoy this show, man. I really do. Uh, all right, so there you go. Uh, I don't want to keep harping on Hikaleo and, and Lawler, but yeah, I mean, yeah. I think I thought that was fine. Uh, and then the what? The second semifinal match with King and uh, yeah, and Leo. Yeah, Brody King defeating Leo Rush in seven minutes thirty-eight with a gunso bomb, and um, Brody King making it through to the final. So again, this is not a dissimilar story here with a smaller guy against the big guy, but they they changed it up enough for it to feel fresh and interesting. And and I do like to see Brody King against a smaller opponent who can bump for him and make him look like a monster because. On Strong, they've often put him against other big guys, which is, is fine, it's entertaining, but I like to see it mixed up so wrestlers can show their, their range, their diversity. And yeah, it was different to the previous match because here, Leo Rush is using his speed and his elusiveness and his great arsenal of kicks as opposed to the, the technique and the submission moves and the grappling of Tom Lawler. And there was a nice callback to the finish of the Clark Connors match here. Leo tried the same move with right. a kick into the, the Rush Hour springboard cutter, but Brody was too big, he's too strong for that. Caught him and then... Threw him with the German suplex, the gunso bomb. So, yeah, nice variant on the previous match. And again, I don't think the loss hurts Leo Rush either. I was hoping that he would get to the final, maybe even win the thing, because I think he's one of the most exciting wrestlers that they've got over there at Strong. But I, I can't have any complaints about the result and, and a Brody King versus Tom Lawler final, which is very, very interesting. Yeah. I think uh, it's, it's just maybe one undercard match. And then if they give them time, that'd be fun. I think, right? I think I think I think Lawler would be be a real nice oppo- opponent for King. 
Like they, uh, they, I've got the schedule up here. Sorry, we've got uh, opening matches: Clark Connors and TJP against JR Kratos and Chris Dickinson. Second match, we've got Rocky Romero against the debuting Wheeler Yuta, and then uh, the third match will be King versus Lawler. Okay, so you're figuring what? 15, 20 minutes. They don't need any longer than that. That's the thing. Um, I yeah. think for certainly in the the domestic product in New Japan, sometimes I feel the main events are long for the sake of being long. And with a lot of the wrestlers that they've got on strong, certainly the bigger wrestlers, I think sometimes less is more. That, you know, when you're watching, for example, heavyweight mixed martial arts, most of the time you're not expecting it to go the full 15 or full 25 minutes because right. that, the, the appeal of heavyweight matches. You know, like when Brock Lesnar was made his renaissance in WWE with his short, unpredictable matches. And I think there's something to that in keeping the matches shorter. So, yeah, I would not be surprised to see this one doing under 15 minutes. I think that would be absolutely fine. Right. If they go right at it, right, right. And, and again, when I say go right at it, I kind of – here's – if I'm picturing this match, like I don't want like a, a walk and brawl. I don't want, you know, any – I don't want any time outside the ring. I want hard hits. I want beefy strikes. I want like interesting mat grappling where it, it, it's, it, it, it's like danger is right around the corner. I want stiff kicks. Um, I, I just want it to be all condensed in, yeah, in like 10 minutes and where, where you're, where that submission or that p- quick pinfall or that it's like, I want it to be like a hard hitting Yano match is what I really want. You know what I mean? Like I want, I want that element uh, and I think they could pull that off. Like, I just don't want it to be something where it's plotting and if they, shave time that that's not yeah if they if they said okay go 30 minutes you're you're you have you're in jeopardy of having that i don't think you're gonna have that in this and that's why again i stress again the dynamic of strong itself lends itself to matches that are quick uh stylistically different and uh, again you're you're you you have the possibility to be on the edge of your seat this is gonna be i think this is gonna be really good I, I'm, look, when we did the, the the brackets, I think we had favorites that we wanted um, to see just from a New Japan booking perspective, right? This might be the best matchup they could possibly sort out, right? Yeah, I think so. And I think it's a credit that we were completely wrong with our picks because even, even back then we did say that a lot of those first round matches were coin flips. And I think that's great having that level of unpredictability. But... Certainly, um, Brody King versus Tom Lawler on paper, that is one of the most interesting and exciting matches they could do. I mean, have you got a, a feel for who you think is going to win? I mean, personally, I think Tom Lawler might be the more interesting choice because they've got all those storylines built in with Team Filthy and the Discord zone there with Chris Dickinson. So they've got ready made title feuds that they, they can go with there. And the strong champion, presumably, is going to be someone who's going to stay stateside, which right. I believe Tom Lawler's doing with his MMA. Uh, plans his obligations coming up in the year so i think tom laurel would be a great choice but i wouldn't, wouldn't complain about Brody king either you know because he can take that belt onto roh and get a bit of shine for it there maybe have some d- defend it on roh why not so just certain certainly exciting possibilities for either way this one shakes out yeah i mean i don't know how like ring of honor is not what ring of honor used to be right i don't know if you're going to get that much of a plus from that um I mean, and, and just because they're not running as many shows, they're certainly not as high profile. Um, not even, you know, I mean, you'd have to say Impact is is more of a of a um, more of a shine than than ROH would be at this point. Um, Tom is, yeah. I mean, I, I I think it's a perfect choice, right? And I think you know just what the, with the way the promotion is, I don't want to say built around him, but he is a focal point. Um. Yeah, I think it's a good pick. I think I, th- I think it's a really. Good, I mean, think about that. That's that's a that's pretty. That's that's going to be pretty good. I mean, strong every week. Now you have okay, great. He won New Japan Cup USA. Great. I think the m- more important thing is is that strong title, and now we have something that people are actually fighting over and fighting for. And that's defended on a regular basis. And you have programs and angles and 
and interesting things to occur, all with the idea that this championship is the most important thing in Strong. And again, if that's a building block to someone's career to say, okay, I won this title now, I get to go to Japan. You know, wouldn't that be something where it's like, that's what I was thinking. The, the strong title holder gets to enter the G1 or something like that. Right. 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 It's it's a, it's it's not only do you get the belt, but you get, get the, the idea of being, dare I say, the touring champion where you can go and defend it. And you're the only one that can go to Japan. No one else can go to Japan. Like you have to be the, ho- the title holder and then you can get booked on Sakura Genesis or you can get booked on Dantaku. Or you can get booked on whatever. Or be an entrant in G1. Like, you have to be the title holder. No one else goes. And 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 it could be something where the fact is, you know what? I'm going to get out of this dojo. I'm going to get out of this fucking warehouse. I, there's bigger and better things for me. I need to go and, and really make my mark. And if that means being quarantined for two weeks, I'll do that because I'm strong champion. Like, that's cool. Love it. We're getting fired up for New Japan. Me too. Well, an in- interesting <laughs> question here, actually. Uh, Chris says, I'm enjoying the LA Dojo boys as a faction. They give off mean boy clique or stuck up rich kid vibes. Yeah, I, I had the same thought, actually. Um, to use a, a karate kid analogy, the LA Dojo boys, like Clark Connors, Alex Coughlin, uh, Kevin Knight, they, they seem to me more Cobra Kai than Daniel LaRusso. Like the, the Young Lions... In Japan, you know, you gay kids, Yota Suji, Yuta Emras, they're more like Daniel Russo. You know, they're the underdog, the, the, the fiery baby face you're rooting for. Yeah, come on, kids, you can do it. Whereas the LA Dojo boys, they just seem a bit more sort of, bit more attitude, a bit more rough and ready. Like, you know, the high school jocks that are going to shove you into a locker and it's got a bit of edge to them. I like it. That's every white boy in LA, <laughs> in Southern California. <laughs> so this is art imitating life then. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Um, look, uh, yeah, I, th- I think they, uh, I think they lean into it a bit. Let's put it that way. So, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I, you can see that absolutely. Here's one. Uh, another Chris says, "Who from the WWE releases would you like to see in New Japan or Strong, and where would they fit best?" So, the only name that really interests me is, is of course, Samoa Joe. And there's going to be a lot of people vying for his services. I think he would be tremendous if he they could get him for a taping or two on Strong. You know, maybe challenge Tom Lawler for the Strong title if it is, or, or Brody King, or whoever wins that. Or there's there's so many interesting matches you could do. The both of those guys, you could do Chris Dickinson, uh, Fred Rosser, Jr. Kratos, uh, maybe some of the the up and comers. You know, get get him in there against Carl Fredericks. There's so many possibilities if they could get some mojo. I'm not necessarily saying that I think it's going to happen. I mean, we know that. He, this is not the, the same Samojo of the mid 2000s, of course. So uh, I think people saying, "Oh yeah, get him in the G1," maybe getting ahead of themselves a bit there. What do you think? You, your your thoughts on the possibility of Samojo making it to either Japan or to Strong? A super sexy, right? We're talking. I think when when it was announced, he was released. I think there were more than a few New Japan Pro Wrestling office members and uh, fans alike that were salivating at the idea. And again, we all know it's not, you know, you know, uh, the summer of punk or, you know, it's not, uh, uh, you know, ring of honor, Samoa Joe. And it's not, you know, it's not Joe versus Kenta Kabashi. Uh, that being said, here's a guy that early in his career, if you remember, Spent a lot of time in that Anoki Dojo system in California, right? Uh, spent a lot of time with that Rocky Romero, right? Uh, knows knows that Dojo training system and is very familiar with a lot of the people that uh, would be involved in New Japan and and the like. I think it's a no-brainer. I think he, I think he almost. I mean, if 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 Samoa Joe is interested in something like this, and you would think he would, because again, he, I think he's a, pu- a, a pro wrestling f- purist at heart. I think there's got to be some interest there, and I think there's got to be a lot of interest from the New Japan side. Yeah, 
even if it's just a strong uh, thing, imagine just how elevated that show becomes, right? Um, I don't think you just put him on strong, though. I think you almost have to have him in New Japan. Like, you, you almost have to have that. Um, and I don't know what, a, what his asking price would be, right? So you got to get the most you can out of him because I don't think the, the asking price would be cheap. And again, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe he does it as a favor. Maybe he does it because he wants – who knows? But I just think the asking price would be a little bit high. So anywho, yes. I think of all these recent releases and all these recent um, people being let go and, and, and the fantasy booker and everybody pops out, I think Samoa Joe is the sexiest name, right? Give me another name. Russo or whatever, Miro now or whatever. Like, is that, would that be the closest one that has been released recently um, that would be the sexiest name for, for a New Japan roster? I thought you were talking about Vince Russo for a minute there. Rusev, you mean? Rusev. Come on, get, get, get his WWE. What did I say, Russo? <laughs> Russo. <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I mean, certainly he was a, a, a big prospect when he was released, but now it seems that he's been quite disappointing in AEW. I don't watch it, but from what I've heard on the grapevine, he's been uh, a little bit flat so far. But so, okay. I don't know. I mean, there's, there's potential for him to be heated up, but certainly Samoa Joe is definitely a sexy one. And, and I'm starting to think... When things start opening up again and, and travel is more easy between the two countries, just getting a big show, could you do it either in Japan or, or stateside actually, and having guys like John Moxley, or if you can pick up one of these names like Samoa Joe, and having Tom Lawler on there as well, or Leo Rush, there's a lot of exciting things you could do if you wanted to have a big show, you know, Madison Square Garden or, or in Japan or whatever. I think there's a reason to be excited for the future. Yeah, I do too. And again, he was on the shelf. Some of Joe were talking about uh, was a concussion issues. I think that's what it was that kind of kept him out of the ring. But he was saying he was okay, he was cleared. But WWE wouldn't let him back in the ring, or I don't know, who knows. But the fact of the matter is, is that I think he's if he's healthy and he's and he's able to get in a ring, I think you can't. You have to do everything in your power, um, and it's funny because when you when we talk about Rusev, um, I mean, to me, I feel like like if we're looking at guys cut from a similar cloth, I think we got the best one in in Jeff Cobb. Honestly, I'd rather have Jeff Cobb than Rusev, right? Wouldn't you? At this point, yeah. I mean, I was a big Rusev fan back in the day, like when he first mm. debuted and when he made his way to sure. the main roster, basically. Up until the point where uh, John Cena beat him at WrestleMania. And from that point, I was just like, oh, okay, all right, th- this is what's happening then. And <laughs> I started yeah. to lose interest. But certainly the the talent is there. It's just, is is there the willingness? Is there, is he, does he want it enough? Is he going to put the effort in to, to do something like, you know, like what John Moxley's done basically? And, and we don't know yet. We don't, you know, might not be interested in that. So if he's not, then fair enough. You know? He still has one of the best WrestleMania entrances of all time with oh, that, that fucking tank. tank. So wasn't good. that good? That wasn't that, I mean, that was the. I, I at that moment, could you think? There's no way that they're gonna fuck this guy up. I mean, this is amazing, right? Yeah, ready-made superstar. I mean, Flatten John Cena in ten minutes, right. and then he's your title challenger the next month, it's, right? And, it's, and then his girlfriend's so making obvious, out with the, you know, what was it? <laughs> what was he making? Was she making out with? Um, not not John Mockley. <laughs> Uh, Lashley, Bobby Lashley, right? Is it wasn't that it? Where they <laughs> you broke... were asking the wrong part. I'll take your oh, word for yeah. it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was just like, oh man. Not only, not only am I getting jobbed out, my girl's making out uh, with someone else on on live TV. Great. Uh, could it get any worse? All right. Well, that's strong. Uh, let's move on to Road to Dontaku. And Flynn uh, asks, tying this back to the start of the show, to Joel, have Arsenal been invited to the European Super League to be the Euro of the new competition? Can't blame the big, big clubs for wanting a night off. So that brings us nicely to uh, yesterday's, no, sorry, Monday's show, April 19th at Coraco and Hall. So I'm only going to touch on the what I thought were the significant matches here. The third match, a special singles match where Tomohiro Ishii beat Yujiro Takashi 15 minutes, 17 seconds with a vertical drop brain buster. And... 
this was your standard Ishii singles match formula. You know what you're going to get with that. But uh, with an opponent who works at like three quarters of the speed and power of everyone else. But you know what? The, the effort was there and it was well paced. It was entertaining enough. I mean, the, the, Yujiro putting a shift in for one of the few big singles matches he's going to get this year. Perfectly fine. I, I was entertained here. It was it was a an Ishi picture this without without if you haven't seen it I haven't popped on New Japan World here's here's what you got you've got an Ishi who again we know what he delivers and I guess the big biggest complaint that people have with him is that his matches are a little bit of the same Z's right. You know what you're getting with an Ishi match, and again, when it's when it's lit, as the kids say, uh, it's lit. All right? We know we know what he brings to the table, and then you have Yujiro, who, again, every once in a while, he has he's asked to put on that singles match. Uh, you know, we'll you know we'll see we'll see what the effort is. You know, it depends on the the uh, the, the venue and the. Uh, willingness to uh, put on a good show. And this was in front of... How many fans would you say were at Corkin, Joel? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 300. Yeah. 306, exactly. Was oh, it 306? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, it looked barren, to say the least. And and I got to... I, there's nothing worse than an empty cork. I'm, I'm going to say it out loud. There's nothing worse than an empty cork and hall. Uh to, to let you know the state of the world when it's like, oh, I guess the show was what? Was this a, the, the Tuesday night show or Wednesday night show? Middle of the week, right? Yeah, Monday, this one. Okay. Um, 300 people. Uh, and you've got Ishii and Yujiro. You, you tell me how this is going to work out, <laughs> right? I mean, again, I, I don't blame them. Like, they're not going to kill themselves. In front of 300 people on a meaningless road to show. I get it. I get that pro wrestling mentality. 100%. And I'll go so far as to say I even think they did more than I would have expected them to given the circumstances. This, There's nothing to see here, guys. There's nothing to see here. It's, it's, it's fine. It's fine pro wrestling. But to sit here and think that we're going to get something that is even uh, memorable like like uh, <laughs> this is the worst part about this <clears throat> is that if i'm going to make a compilation tape of covid era new japan uh, this wouldn't even this wouldn't even make that compilation tape and it's not like we have a ton that we could draw from right a a perfectly fine I hate to throw away, throw out the stars, but just to give it a a, a, a guide, a two and a half, three star singles match in New Japan Pro Wrestling. That's exactly what you got here. For the ones who know safety isn't a catchphrase, it's a culture. And the ones who help make sure everyone makes it home safe. For the safety minded who watch everyone's backs, Granger offers supplies and solutions for every industry, as well as safety assessments and training to keep your facilities safe and your people safer. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Let's move on to the next one. So the fourth match was another special singles match with Taiji Ishimori getting a surprise win over Hiroki Goto in 12 minutes, 8 seconds with a backslide. And I just I want to applaud this being booked in the first place. I always enjoy the uncertainty now of a heavyweight versus junior match because it's not as set in stone as it was several years ago. You know, previously in New Japan, you could you could bet your house on it that the heavyweight was always going to be, be beat the junior, but it's not the case anymore. And uh, doubly interesting here, actually, having the junior as the heel. So Ishimori put in quite a tricky spot here, but... I thought he did well with his control segments, but getting the upper hand in, in crafty, creative ways. A bit like a matador with an angry bull of Hiroki Goto charging at him. But uh, ultimately, I mean, I, I think it failed because when Ishimori got that backslide pin, I was cheering. I was like, yeah, you did it. And I still uh, was uh, appreciating him as the underdog there. Like he, he outsmarted Goto 
who ended up looking like a big idiot and beat him fair and square with a clean pin. Good match, but it's kind of a surprising outcome. And it kind of was surprising to me too that, well, yeah, the finish was, because I, I, trust me, I was just waiting for the, the Goto big comeback and away we go one, two, three, right? I think everybody was. Um, Ishimori, it felt like, and correct me if I'm wrong, it felt like he, I don't want to say dominated the match, but he felt, it felt like he was in control a lot of this match, more than half, more than I thought, let's put it that way, and more given New Japan's history of juniors versus heavyweights. Like, it felt like Ishimori not only got a, a, a clean win, uh, he did it in a, a more dominant way. Like, it wasn't a slip on a banana peel win. It was a win, which kind of surprised me. And and let's be honest here. Where does that put fucking Goto? <laughs> right? Like, that's the one thing that I, that, that like, as much as I appreciated the fact that Ishimori got it, my first reaction was fucking Goto. <laughs> like, what? Where are we going with you, my man? Because, whoo. Like, there's not many people on that roster that are doing that job. He did it, and he did it clean. Like, wow. All right. <laughs> All right. He might. He Look, if we're looking for graduating dad to dad level, that this might be. This might be the beginning of, of that progression. Like, think about that. Think about that. No, oh, I don't know. I mean, it was shocking when Juice got a win over him, right? Like, I remember the world being turned upside down with Juice. And Juice is a heavyweight. Juice finally fucking getting a big win. Biggest win in his career. Goto. And now this? Like, where what are we doing with Hiroki Goto, guys? Well, I guess it has to be appreciated within the context of last night's match as well, the six-man title match, because that played into it later. But uh, I mean, yes, we'll come on to but, that. Yeah, but yes, I, I but, take your point. I, I mean, yeah. I don't think Dotto cares. He's pr- probably you know thinking about getting home to his wife and kids, and they're like, hey, you'd have put over Ishimori. He's like, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. He, he doesn't care, does he? Right, right. That's probably, that's honestly, that's probably more accurate. But it was just from w- watching, and yes, it, it, things lead into other... Th- I don't know. They could have. Anybody could have been in that spot. I, just, I, I don't know. All right. Anyway, go ahead. And the main event was Kenta beating Yoshihashi in 26 minutes, six seconds with a go to sleep. And I really like this. I mean, it was quite long, but I, I still enjoyed it all the way through. I thought it was intense. It was hard hitting. I think they've got good chemistry together. The build was a lot of fun where we've had. Kenta taking the bow staff and doing interviews as the bow staff and uploading that Photoshop picture of the friends cast as the, the guys from either teams, which I thought was a lot of fun. He's, it, Kenta just seems like a guy who is uh, launching a, a career as a comedian and doing the wrestling as a, a side hustle. But uh, even so, they, they they brought the fire. I thought this was really good. Um, they, they actually they brought out the bow staff at the climax at the end. That was a, a great wrinkle in the story and a bit of. Uh, bit of fun to it i mean this is an undercard feud so uh, i i'm perfectly okay with them doing silly things like this um but the match was good there were really great near falls a bit of blood from kenta's mouth and i particularly enjoyed the, the final couple of minutes where kenta just busted up yoshihashi with the, the turnbuckle attack the slaps the Psycho knee and the gts that was it you know no back and forth so, sometimes i just like seeing one guy lay out their opponent at the end dominant fashion with with the flurry of signature moves we don't always need the the back and forth finisher reversal exchanges it was clear kent is the best singles wrestler here and that's that and i like that i think one of the yeah, better main events that we've had at, at korakuin lately and then him cutting a promo in the ring afterwards about how he's likes being an entertainer he, he's going to do whatever he likes and doesn't care what people think and <laughs> talking about how much he loves the bow staff so good stuff and i thought a good show overall it felt a bit like a, a g1 show some decent singles matches here and i thought it set up the six man title match the next night really well with all these little plot threads that needed to be resolved rather than just you know throwing together challenges at random so i think the one positive of having all these endless road to shows is that they can take their time uh, building up to these matches pretty well yes and again i don't well let's let me get this point out first i think kenta is is my MVP 
overall, like when you take inside the ring, outside the ring, and also like the idea of who do I want to watch the most? It's probably Kenta, like his entire body of work. Um, like he just seems like a like uh, in a promotion where you have plenty of pros and plenty of of people who really get pro wrestling. Like I feel like he shines above that. Does that make any sense? Like like he's he's a guy that um, gets it. He's a guy that gets it. I think he gets it in ring. He gets it out of the ring. I just find him to be compelling. I find him to be interesting. I probably find him to be funny. Um, like I just feel like he's he is one of these guys that that's keeping. He's he's a glue. He's absolutely a glue that's keeping it together on the the uh, Japan show sides of things. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I like the match. It was I, again. There was nothing terrible on these shows, Joel. Nothing. Nothing was terrible by any stretch. But yeah, if you're gonna say that these are, it's like it was like a G1 show. I guess he, yeah, like night four, <laughs> you know what I mean? Where where you just or night, you know, where you're just trying to get like night eight. Night eight is yeah. always the one where you're like, oh, right. oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> right on 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 a you know on a slate that has you know uh, a bracket that's maybe not the, the sexier bracket. Um. And again, maybe I, I, I don't want to harp on it. These were not bad matches, just matches that you're just like, I feel like we're just getting through. This match was above that. This match was above that. And again, we did get three singles matches on a show. And that's nice to see too, right? Um, with, a, with, dare I say, an upset win. So, all right, maybe it wasn't as bad as I thought. You know, when you when you talk it out loud, it's maybe not as bad. But I'm going to be honest, watching it wasn't that great. <laughs> I, 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 I hate to say it. It was good. It wasn't great. Um, and this match was good. It wasn't great. Um, but uh, given what we – it's the best of what we got, right? What I say – right, let me ask you. Would you say – Go out of your way to watch Kenta Yoshihashi. Ah, uh, no, I would. Yeah, I know. Really? Honestly, I would. I thought it was really good. And you know, if if my New Japan consumption is six matches, that's all we're talking about this this week. Two matches from Strong, three matches from this show, and then one match on the following night. Perfectly enjoyable. I think that is a you know, I'm not. No one should be sitting down to watch these Road Two shows. Uh, top to bottom. No one should be doing that. No. But for me, if you were going to say, would I recommend people check out uh, Yoshihashi against Kenta? Yeah, I would. I thought it was really good. Okay. All right. I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I don't. I don't know in good faith I could do that. Um. Again, the match was good. It was fine. I don't think it's something where, uh, like, if somebody were in a deep sleep. And woke up three months later and said, guys, what did I miss? I don't know if I'm putting this match on the list of, oh, yeah, yeah oh, you got to check out Kenta versus Yoshihashi. Uh, you know, this is, it's not in the note, because it's not on the match of the year list. But for someone, you know, the, the, the type of people who listen to our podcast or on our Discord, follow the product, I think it's, I would say, yeah, this was a, an enjoyable match and check it out. I'm not saying, oh, my God, you've got to see this one. It was a... You know, a good sort of three and three quarter star, maybe four star match. I thought it was. You're going to high score, and I like I like both guys. I'm a fan of Kenta. I'm a big fan of Yoshihashi. Very much improved. You know, winner of our most improved award, and and I think this this is testament to that. I thought they did a good job, but you know, it's are not you being over watch are, stuff. Are you being overly generous with the four? Do you think you're being a little bit over? Like you're in a good are you in a good mood? You had a good day. <laughs> you no, gotta had a little romance, you know I haven't little, had a man, good day. little manscaped action, right? So you're in a good mood. Probably had a big steak, right? Or some kind of fucking delicious meal over there, right? You had uh, maybe some romance. You're in a good mood. You're feeling good about life, and you woke up, and you popped that on, and you gave it an extra star just because you're in a good mood and you're feeling good about it, right? 
you're in a good you're in a good space. So you gate you you're, you're throwing around snowflakes like they're uh, like they're uh, chocolate chip cookies, right? They're like the candy. Man. You know this is untrue. You know I've had I know, a shit I know. day. It's, it's literally <laughs> every, the still... opposite of everything I just said. Yes. <laughs> right? I know. I know. Uh, all right. All right. I think I think four is generous. I think four is generous. All right. Three. Three and three quarters. I'll, all right. I'm with you. Can you yeah, give me yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. You got it. All right, uh, so uh, Tuesday show, let's go straight to the main event here, what these three singles matches were building up to, which was the never openweight six-man tag championship match with the Chaos team, Yoshihashi, Ishii, Goto beating the challengers, Ishimori, Yujiro, and Kenta. Goto getting his win back against Little Taiji, 20 minutes, right. 14 seconds, following the GTR. And I, I like this belt, Damon. and I'm a big fan of the positioning of these titles as the Korakuen main event. It's the Korakuen title, and I, I like the, this champion team a lot, the Chaos team. I think the challengers were also built out really well. Like I said before, they've had time to, to lay out this story and I thought the story was good. I thought the match delivered. They did some creative stuff with the multi-man elements. Like there were some really exciting sequences with Ishii and Yudra and Kenta all in the ring at the same time. I thought both teams showed good synergy. They worked on some nice cohesive team moves together. And I liked the, the little callbacks to the previous night singles matches for some great near falls like Ishimori trying to backslide again against Goto. And it had a, a feel-good, a, a satisfying ending with Goto getting his revenge on Ishimori, Yoshihashi getting his bow staff back. And people, you know, they might hand-wave these six-man titles, but I think it's given a chance for f- five, five and a half really good wrestlers to do something that I think is meaningful. I mean, it got me to tune in, at least, and has given us something to talk about here, so I'll give it a thumbs up. Yeah, I'll give it, I'll definitely give it a thumbs up. And... <sighs> I don't know. Like, I, I, look, I feel like Goto had to get that win. I don't know why I'm harping on the fact that Goto had to get the win and Goto's position in all this. Like, I don't know why that was like a, such a, a thing uh, leading into this match. Um, and yes, I guess in hindsight, I should have been a little bit more tuned in to say, okay, yes, definitely Goto's getting the win back. Um, but at the time, I think it, it, like I was more shocked in a singles match that Goto did take the fall, right? But it was a night of redemption. Look, those those never six man titles. I think you can't. The problem with them is this: is that they they have shit like this, and I mean shit in a good way, um, where these like the the, the whole. These shows were centered around these titles. And you can get into that, right? You can get into that. And it can be a highlight. But now the problem is, Joel, is that they're going to take those titles and they're going to put it in a fucking Tupperware bin and let it sit for like five months. Like, you're not going to hear about it. It's like they wheel these things out like, it feels like not very often, and they don't. They, they could just, just. Here's what I just want them to do: keep this pace of the never six man titles, and really all their titles. Here's the one thing I really don't like about New Japan: the fact that they constantly weave titles in and out. That doesn't that annoy you to a, to a, to a big degree? Just keep it at a, a a certain pace. Keep people interested in it. Stop with the pulling back and putting you know this title in the forefront just make them yeah have the fucking guys wear them uh, i don't know like it just feels like they they do that a lot and it's it's unnecessary keep the momentum that you have with these belts and just keep it keep it i mean it's not a ton of momentum but at least they're in the forefront now but you know they're just going to go on a back burner again and they're going to focus on another thing and that's annoying to me just you can't do two things at once yeah, I'll give you that. I mean, they've had the belt since August and they've defended them four times and they should be doing it more often than that. I think one one defense per month, I think, would be a good thing to aim for. Right. That's not that hard, is it? <laughs> is it that hard? I mean, what else? Yeah, are you especially doing not when for- you're running Cork and Hall fucking 50 times <laughs> already, you know, there's, there's plenty of space for it. Right. I just don't understand why they can't do two things at once. Can we have the focus on, you know, the the never title and the never six, I mean just make it a never night a night of never hey I fixed it for you there you go a night of never we have a, the the never singles title defended we have the the, the six man defended 
We could do that once a month, can't we? We can't do that once a month. Come on. It's not that fucking hard. Not that fucking hard. I'll tell you what. The night of never. The night of never. I'm, I'm, I'm a fucking genius, man, sometimes. I really... Whew. Alright, I'm done. Someone, someone <laughs> in that company should be giving you a job, Damon. You know where to find him. Come on. Um, Alright, well, next week there's not a great deal going on apart from uh, Monday show in Hiroshima where we have two singles matches heading things. So, fifth match, we have Sanada versus Aaron Hanari. And then the sixth match is Tetsuya Naito against Great Okan. So, I know we touched on you these You know what this before. smells like? Yeah. What does it smell like, Damon? You know what it smells like. It smells like somebody looking at the lights with the name of Hinare. <laughs> right? Right? Singles match? Sonata? Hinare? Mm-hmm. Right? This, 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 is a, this is a match where Hinare is looking at the lights. Correct? I don't know. I hope not. Uh, I hope not either. But... Sonata does not need that win at all. Um... Would the loss hurt him? Yeah, probably, but who fucking cares? It's an ad- <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not interested in it. <laughs> uh, right, but I, I, again, I'm working backwards here. Naito Okan, you'd think this is Naito getting his win back from the New Japan uh-huh. Cup and maybe getting some momentum to perhaps push his way into getting something big at one of these stadium shows. Who knows? Because, mm-hmm. you know, we've got nothing for the Yokohama Stadium. So maybe Naito wins here and then makes a claim to that he's going to challenge for the never belt or whatever blah 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 so if we go by that logic we could have uh hinari getting the win there so we are splitting the wins between lij and the united empire yeah. but at the same time i could also see lij having a clean sweep of it so uh in answer to your question i don't know <laughs> i'm throwing my hands up and saying i don't know yeah i don't know saturday May 15th, Joel, we have Wrestle Grand Slam in Yokohama Stadium. Let me repeat that date for you. Less than being a month that away. today is <laughs> being that to, Yeah, being that today is April 21. We have one match. <laughs> if that, really, uh, do we? How is this possible? Like, how is that possible? I, again, I think we see stadium and we get a boner thinking of the possibilities for a stadium show and what stadium shows would mean. What what a big show means to, and I don't mean Paul White, <laughs> um, a big show means to New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, as we sit here on the 21st, that concept, you can fucking wipe your ass with it. Because, again, how many matches do we know for sure, Joel? What, what less than a month away? No. One? No, there's none. none. Yeah. 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 Think about that. And then, I mean, we, we are... are you know, looking on toward Okada and and Will, and we're all, you know, kind of pointing at Tokyo Dome, correct? Yes, or it could be Shingo versus Okada, depending on how that Don Tagri title match plays out. But yeah, that's all we've got. We have half a match <laughs> announced for the Tokyo Dome. Right, and then again, we could sit here and fantasy book and say, okay, we could, we're probably going here, we're probably, but we, there's nothing, there's nothing concrete. Um. Royal seat, a royal seat. Don't I don't want you to look. What's a royal seat in Yokohama Stadium? So we're assuming we're in the Golden Circle, whatever you want to call it, uh, ringside. Royal seat. Give me a price. How much do you think the tickets are in advance for the Wrestle Grand Slam? Uh. I mean, given the state of the pricing for these road twos at Coracle, and I will probably say on the high end, I don't know, 50,000 yen. Not even close. How about 
on the we got to go on the lower side. So they're 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 fifteen thousand yen. Fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. That's really cheap. Yeah, that's the I'm royal shocked. seat. Yeah, fifteen thousand yen. Uh, the cheapest in stand C. Five thousand five hundred yen. That's cheap, isn't it? It's very cheap, and especially if they've got this cap on five thousand people. If that if that is imposed, you'd think they want to try and squeeze as much money out of this as possible. Yeah, I'm really surprised by that. Yeah, right. I would. Um, I I, well, I, I, saw may, those... oh, I, know, I was going to say maybe that this is them trying. People might be thinking, well, I'm going to go to one of these shows. Either Yokohama uh, Stadium or uh, Tokyo Dome, and most people will probably be looking at Tokyo Dome. So maybe they're trying to tempt more people to come to the Yokohama one. Yokohama, yeah, it's very short distance to Tokyo, right? If I'm if if I remember correctly, the one time I took the bullet train um, down to Fukuoka, it was the first stop, and we were in Yokohama, and it felt like ten minutes. Um, so. Yeah, it's not that far away. If if I'm thinking correctly, if I'm if I'm accurate, which I'm probably not, because I'm really fucking dumb. Uh, I'm actually getting at my 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 uh, my currency co- converter. <laughs> I don't know why I can't do this. Uh, so again, uh, five thousand five hundred yen, uh, U.S. dollar, like fifty bucks, fifty bucks for the cheapest ticket. I mean, in this day and age, it's not that bad for a pro wrestling ticket. Um, the 15,000, if you don't mind me doing my calculations, uh, 150 bucks. So 150 bucks for, again, what would be the closest you could get to the um, to the ring. Again, for a big show, that's not, I, I honestly thought it would be more than that. So um, good on good on New Japan. At least they're not gouging. But yes, uh, there you go. There's Yokohama. We got nothing for it, though. So we'll see if it's even worth uh, two yen. Thank you very much. Well, anyway, I'm looking forward to Naito Okan. I thought their first match was really good. I thought they got great chemistry. The build has been good as well. The, the shots that they've been firing at each other in the backstage comments have been a lot of fun. So um, if you're going to watch any New Japan, I would say check out those two singles matches. Hopefully they'll be good. And... A, lot, a couple of bits of news here coming out from these. Uh, first of all, the results of the Evil versus Yano KOPW stipulation poll. And uh, oh, in yeah. a, a Brexit-like... Up, well, I say upset. I mean, we expected this to happen. 52% Yano's shitty... Uh, what is it? It's not even a, a blind Pull the bag boots. over the guy's <laughs> head. Bag, pull yeah. the bag over the guy's head and, and try and schoolboy him. Uh, that is what the people want to see. I mean... Like, if these are the That's same bullshit. maniacs who are forking over money and turning up to these shows at Coracle and all. You <laughs> shouldn't be surprised they're picking the worst option. But they didn't pick any game. I'm annoyed you about believe that. It? I wanted to see the the lights out thing. Me too. Everybody did, Joel. I don't believe for a fucking second that the majority voted on. Do you honestly think that the New Japan Pro Wrestling Booking Committee sat around and said, "Well, we can't figure out the finish. We have to wait till the votes are tallied." Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> these, these, they're, they're not, in no way, shape, or form were these fucking votes dictating the match. You know what I mean? Like, think about that. In pro wrestling, we're going to let, we got to wait to see what the fucking match is going to be by the votes of the fans. Come on! Get out of here. We knew this was it. This is bullshit from the beginning. It's just stop so terrible. The, stop the steal, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were expecting something new and fresh from this KOPW thing, and the best I can come up with is Yano putting a bag over a guy's head and rolling him up. Really? Yes. Is that it? Come on. Yes. You could do better yes. than that. Do you really think they're going to say, okay, we're going to turn on the lights, we're going to turn off the lights, and they're going to have... Uh, come on. Somebody's going to be in charge of the lights? That's just another thing that could get fucked up. Now... And again, I understand that New Japan Pro Wrestling is rather popular. Not certainly not as popular as it once was or could be, but that's a discussion for another day. But do you mean to tell me how many people voted in this fucking sh- the, the, this poll? Fifty thousand people between the 
people, you know, 50,000 people voted in this? You mean to tell me 50,000 people voted in this is what I'm trying to say. Come on. I don't know. I can't be bothered to open up Twitter and find out. So, <laughs> sure, why not? 50,000. <laughs> I don't believe it for a fucking second. Well, we have uh, another interesting caveat from yeah. Tangaloa, of all people, who says with, with his singles match against Zack Sabre Jr. on May 3rd, which, of course, is a, a card that is going to get all the headlines for Taichi and Tamatonga in their Iron Fingers ladder match. But for this Zack against Tangaloa singles match, the stipulation is if Zack Sabre Jr. wins, then Dangerous Techers get an IWGP heavyweight tag team title shot. But okay. if Tangaloa wins, Dangerous Techers can never challenge for the tag titles again. Mm. Interesting. Well, <sighs> I think they win, right? I think they're going to be your new champions, to be quite honest with you. I mean, here's the thing. I, I mean, there's, I'll tell you, I'll go so far as to say right now, watch him not happen, but I'm going to say it anyway. Who cares? Nobody listens to the show anyway. <laughs> Um, there's a, I don't think there's any chance in hell that, that, uh, Zach loses that match. And I could, because, uh, again, why would they, why would they do that? Why, why would they do that? Unless, uh, un, again, unless somebody is like retiring from pro wrestling and I'm never doing, you know, they're like leaving the company and they're going to go open up a fucking spoon shop, uh, somewhere in Tokyo. Um, Yeah. No, that's a, that's a definite win. That's a that's a definite win. Definite win for Zach. Let's move on to some listener questions then. Uh, Mixer Plick says, I love flying wrestling. I worry we don't have an obvious successor lined up to take on the mantle of legendary Tiger Mask. I would love to see a Tiger Mask 5 official be able to do a space flying Tiger Drop, but I'm not sure the New Japan Dojo system is likely to be able to manufacture a wrestler of such ability. Is there anyone we can recommend to help? Recruiting gymnasts oh. from the Olympics? I don't know, spitballing here. So Look, this is something we touched on before. You know, people have suggested other people in the dojo to take on the mantle of Tiger Mask. What, what do you see happening to that? When, when the current Tiger Mask... another Ma- Tiger Mask. Why so you, you think after what? Tiger Mask 4, that's it? There no more Tiger Masks? I thought I said that after Tiger Mask 1. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need the other three. Uh, what is the obsession that people have with continuing on Tiger Mask? Tiger Mask, let me break the bad news to people. Tiger Mask was massive in 1982, 182, when Sayama did. Yes, massive. Yeah, for pro, for New Japan, you know, he brought in the kid. Uh, yes, revolutionary wrestler. I mean, without question, maybe the, the, the quickest wrestler I've ever seen to this day. I mean, I uh, he was uh, he was my, one of my favorites, and I I saw him twice. I saw him three times on WWF television, and never saw him again until I got older and got into tape trading. But but he was he was tattooed in my soul, Tiger Mask. I don't need uh, Miss Misawa having that, and uh, I, that was. I mean, it led to a, a nice angle, not better than nice. It was a pretty legendary angle where he rips off the mask and, you know, Lama Sao, and away we went with all Japan in the 90s. But, I, I, again, all these, as, you know, a famous pro wrestling podcaster would say, all these dollar store versions, I don't, I'm don't. i okay with. I, I, I don't need another tiger mask. We can, we can lay that to rest. It's like... I, 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 again, we don't, it's, it's, I don't know. Just, I don't, I don't, I'm not a big fan of people carrying on gimmicks. Like the idea that you have to pass this torch to somebody. No, let them be themselves. I'm going to be honest. I, I, um, if I'm a wrestler, a young wrestler, I don't know if I want that. Like, I don't think I would, I know I, I wouldn't want that. And I would think the majority wouldn't want that either. Like, oh, we're going to make you the new Tiger Mask. Oh. Oh. I got to live up to the idea of somebody in the 80s. You know what I mean? Like, that's a lot to carry. And you're not your own person. And you kind of got to wrestle that way. You know what I mean? It's like, I just feel like you're like, oh, 
I gotta I gotta imitate Tiger Mask. That's 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 my like I'm not myself. I, I there's an expectation that I now have to to like you're not gonna get MMA Tiger Mask, right? You're not gonna you're not gonna put Jeff Cobb under Tiger. You know what I mean? Like like you gotta have this. It's, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't want it. I'm good. That there's my Tiger Mask rant for the day. Thank you. I, I will not accept the disrespect to Matantha Cueto uh, from <laughs> Lucha name. Underground. Of course, uh, Jeff Cobb's far more uh, famous and successful alter ego. So, not having it. No Lucha Underground slander on this podcast, Damon. All right, next question. Vase Collector says, as an expert and appreciator of video game world building or lore, if you will, what does Joel think of The Fiend's Law? Better or worse than Bloodborne or Phantasm? I think it's an insult putting The Fiend in the same question as Bloodborne and, and Phantasm as well, which is a, a very silly film, but a, a fun and a good one. That uh, it's, it's a, a summer classic. Everyone should watch that. Uh, what but, is a um, law? Law is like uh, the the world building and the sort of the story behind the story, if you will. Uh, so oh. Bloodborne and, and Dark Souls, these games are famous for. They don't explicitly tell you the story, but if you sort of pick up items and read the item descriptions and, and pick up on the little clues here and there, you can kind of piece together the story for your own enjoyment, but it's not going to make you sit through hours of cutscenes to, to force it down your throat. But uh, I, I fear that if I were to delve into any fiend lore, I would end up on uh, some sort of sex offenders register. So I'm not going to do that. Um, wow. <laughs> do you, have, you seen, have you seen how they've got... Alexa Bliss dressed up. What the what they're trying to portray with her? Was that that was the young lady that was um, on the on the on the 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 Jack in the Box thing, right at WrestleMania? Yeah, that's her, right? Yeah. Again, I I feel like the biggest dog because I literally don't know anyone there. Um, uh, I mean, I saw the, the the blood come out of her face. Um, she is dressed like a schoolgirl, right? Yeah, they, that's they, it. They, she, they, 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 they are infantilizing her. Well, some was I don't watch it. I'm, I'm, these are other people's words. Infantilizing her and sexualizing her. You know, she was mounting uh, Randy Orton in the ring several weeks ago and um, <laughs> grinding in, in a sec- yes, in a, a sexual manner. So uh, those the the, the thematic uh, juxtaposition of those two elements make me very uncomfortable, and I don't want to talk about it no more. <laughs> no, yeah. I will uh, say this though that, that that there is that l- yeah it is a it is a touchy subject but I think we all know that in a lot of media they do lean into that that whole schoolgirl vibe thing I never got that I was never a huge fan of that like I always felt that was a little weird uh, and and again I'm a guy that grew up with you know 80s hair metal music talking about singing about 15 and 16 year olds and all that nonsense um yeah it's uh i never i never got the schoolgirl gimmick i never got that well i don't know i don't know how that turned into a, a thing but yeah okay all right the only good schoolgirl gimmick is in shenmue where uh sometimes you find these two sort of thug uh schoolgirls on street corners and when you talk to them they threaten to beat you up and that always makes me laugh. So thumbs up for that. Shenmue, doing things the right way. Uh, next question. TJ says, uh, I need Damon's reaction to this Empire fan art. So have a look at the WhatsApp oh, and tell me what you think about this. I, got a, I have a text from Joel Abraham. Here we are. Uh, right. Yes. Opening the thing up. Hmm. Let's see here. Oh, I like that. So th- like this that. is Empire... Uh, gender bending is that the term that they use where they, they've been portrayed know. as females uh, which which one of those <laughs> lovely uh, which one are ladies? I digging yeah. <laughs> which one which are you one? asking it's, to the prom you, you can say it you can say it uh, you're gonna you're gonna think this is alright let me ask you this which one do you think I would what, like I think Knowing me, which one would I pick? I think Lady Jeff Cobb. You would be correct. Yes. You would be absolutely correct. Yeah. Yeah, Lady Jeff Cobb. Definitely. Although Lady Lady Will, I dig. Lady Will, I dig. Um Yeah, Lady Jeff Cobb. Lady Jeff Cobb's got some 
Yeah, never mind. <laughs> she could, nice eyes. She's going to take nice. you on a tour of her <laughs> islands any day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not, listen, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll cancel this when I'm good and ready, all right? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, there you go. Nice. All right. That's good. I like that. That's, I, I love the art. I love art time. I love, I love. Don't you feel like, and I know it's not like they just sit down and like, Instantly create this art. They practice. They sketch. I'm sure we've. There's fucking 500 pictures that are in the fucking rubbish. Um, but when you see shit like that, and you're like, I have no talent. Like I don't know how to do fucking shit. I can't do anything. I hate that. Or like you go like, uh, t- like today we're going to fucking build a deck out of. You know, and you're just like, I don't even know how to hold a drill. You know what I mean? I don't even know what the fuck. What did I, where did I go wrong, Joel? <laughs> where did I go wrong? All right, what else we got? What other fine questions we have from our fine listeners? Uh, well, on, uh, from our Discord says, uh, talking about the Mortal Kombat movie, is this new one better or worse uh, as dumb fun than the first Mortal Kombat? Because I, I had a little treat at the weekend, Damon. Mally uh, again gave me permission to go to the cinema. I just I thought I'd go to the the one closest to me, which is a, a short walk down the road in a shopping mall. Uh, I didn't realise, though, that it was some kind of luxury cinema. And when I turned up and asked for the ticket, uh, let me let me do... I'm, I'm going to get the currency converter out for you as well. So, you okay. know... So, 2,000 baht, they said, is a ticket. So, that's like $60. And I, for a movie? Oh, yes. So, I was like... Are you getting a hand job in this movie? <laughs> I know, I know. So, I was like, that is way too much. That is obscene. But for me, the time is more precious than the money. So fuck it, I'm here. I'm not. I'm not changing my plans because if I, you know, if I had to travel, go to a different cinema, I'm I'm missing out on my my alone time. So I thought, fuck it, let's let's just do it. And I was the only person in the screen, and it was yeah. one of these these gimmick ones where instead of seats, they're literally beds. So there was just wow. me by myself in the cinema, lying on a, a bed with all these. <laughs> cushions and pillows and, and a blanket i mean I, I could have had a lovely wank in there if i was a, 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 you had a degenerate blanket? person which i'm not <laughs> but a, a mini bar as well so a little fridge next to it with a complimentary oh. i say complimentary included in the price uh drinks and, and snacks there so i d- enjoyed the movie had a great time um went out afterwards and they said oh are you going to use our our facility our, our tea room before you leave i was like what do you mean and like, oh you can have a free free meal here i was like oh okay so oh. i got like an afternoon tea you know when they they stack the three plates on top of each yes. other with a little canopy so i nearly missed out on that because i was about to go and meet mally for lunch so and esther came we were going to have uh uh dumplings at this this place called ding tai fung which is uh, a taiwanese they, they specialize in the shaolong bao you know the little soup dumplings where you bite into yes. and the soup comes out mm-hmm. so she was texting me saying we're here where are you and I, i'm about to leave the cinema and the person saying well it's included in your ticket so i'm like Fuck it, give, give, give me the snacks. So I'm sitting down, like necking this coffee and eating all these tiny looks like, like a kind of minute, tiny slice of pizza, a little shot glass full of Tom Yum flavored spaghetti, little crispy fish with, with herbs on it. So I'm just like necking these things down. And, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> cookie monster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was the best afternoon I've had for a long, long time. Uh, what was that the question? Oh yeah, the film, the Mortal Kombat film. It was good. It was yeah, it was mindless fun. I mean, I think people uh, d- don't get bogged down in the story. The story's rubbish. The new character they came out with is also boring and rubbish. But d- there's enough. They, they did some really fun stuff with the character of Kano. It's basically the Kano movie. Someone else said that on my Discord, and I agree with that. He's he's an absolute riot. So um, if you like to see uh, a foul mouthed Australian man uh, cracking lots of one liners, then this is certainly the movie for you. The, the fights were good. It was just you know it's brain candy, very good. Was it as good as the original? Not quite. I mean, that one is just incredibly fun and enjoyable to me. Just f- for the the sheer joy, of the 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 unique interpretations of those two D sprites that these these actors brought out. Uh, you know, the Raiden character, Kano again, Johnny Cage, uh, Shang Tsung. They all did such a good job making them unique and, and bringing them to life and the fun interplay between them all. And the fight scenes are good as well. I think it's you know people hand wave that movie, and it is a, a silly movie, but. Uh, I think the the actors and the characterization deserves a lot of credit there. So um, yeah, big fan of both. For, for those of you who are interested in Mortal Kombat, definitely check out the new movie. It's a lot more violent and gory than the the original Mortal Kombat movie. Uh, they're certainly leaning in on the fatalities, but you're going to have a good time, definitely. I can't believe I'm waiting until one hour and thirty seven minutes into this podcast 
I saw maybe the last hour of Godzilla King Kong. How did that happen? Was it on, on your TV or what? Uh, yeah, I just happened to be there. Right, let's, <laughs> let's hear it. What did you think? Uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, again, if you like big monsters smashing like in fight scenes in, I guess, where are we at? Uh, Hong Kong or uh, I don't know where the city it took place. But it was a lot of neon, a lot of, a lot of windows getting shattered. Um, can I talk about – I don't want to spoil it for anyone. Can can we can we give a little? Uh, I'm about to spoil it, so if you're yes. listening, you spoiler alert! Fucking... Spoiler alert! Skip forward spoiler. if you do not want to be spoiled for Godzilla versus King Kong. Please, okay. In three, two, uh, it was pretty fucking goofy. Where okay, so it's Godzilla and King Kong beating the shit out of each other, and the little kid crying. You know, got King Kong is like, you know, I feel his heartbeat stopping. You know, he's hold, she's holding the ground. The tear is rolling down her face. Okay, great, great kid. And then they they land the fucking spaceship on King Kong's heart to to, to jumpstart it. Like that was like what? Okay, so now boom, King Kong's up. He's ready to fight. And the little girl's like, "You don't don't fight Godzilla. He's with us. Fight the 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 robot version of Godzilla." And then it's fucking double team and the robot. Um, yeah, it was two baby faces against one heel. Do, do these people right. know nothing about pro wrestling? <laughs> right, right, right. And like the fights, you know, like you know, Godzilla is standing on King Kong's uh, uh, chest, and then they both get in each other's face. Like the, you know, it's kind of like the old forearm smash. And now we're, we're, we're standing next to each other, and we're we're te- you know we're we're yelling at each other's face, and more blows, and we're yelling at each other's face. Like it was that. Um, it was like everything. It was very pro wrestling ish, but I, I will say again, the, the like the uh, effects and everything. Yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty fucking cool. Again, two gigantic monsters fighting in a city with plenty of neon and plenty of fucking buildings collapsing and shattering. Yeah, I mean, who who wouldn't like that? But yeah, I I failed to mention that it was on my TV. For a little bit, and I, I watched a little bit of it. it. Nonsense, but it was fine. It was all right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It was just one of those films where, like, any time there was a, a human character on the screen, I'm getting my phone out. I'm going on Twitter. I'm not, right. I'm not interested in this shit. G- give me the monsters battering each other, please. Right, and of course they're always flying by in a spaceship, you know, or a plane or some kind of aircraft, and they're, you know, everybody's all solemn and oh, this is. Oh, so sad. And the kid, you know, of course, they turn around and they see the, the heartbreak on the kid, the little kid's face. And they're like, oh, what can we do? <laughs> they really try so hard to make you invested in these human characters. But everyone's just they like, step- I hope King Kong and Godzilla stamp on each and every one of you and squishes you into the mud. <laughs> Get off my screen. Yeah. And of course, they have like the, the fatty computer hacker kid, you know, who's trying to hack in. He's going he's gonna to take down the system of the, of the robot Godzilla, you know, and he's he, you know trying to crack the password to get in, and of course, you know, it's you know he gets in instantly. Um, yeah, it's it's every stereotypical thing, like the nerdy, chubby hacker kid, and uh, you know the 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 the, the sassy, uh, uh, f- you know, tough. And take no prisoners, uh, female character, and the <laughs> you know what, Dave, you that, know what I mean? that, that character, the female one, um, the, 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 the actress, she's from Stranger Things, I think. She was also she appeared in the previous Godzilla movie, King of the Monsters, which I've seen and I completely forgot. I thought it was a new character <laughs> because she made so, that that storyline left such little impression on me during Godzilla King of the Monsters that I was just like, oh, okay, it's a new character that I don't care about, and immediately forget afterwards. Right, right. You will not remember, like, yeah, there, there will be no, none of, you will not remember any of the humans. Uh, this is all about the uh, the giant monsters. So there you go. I thought, if, I, I can't believe I waited to this long, but I just remembered when you were talking movies. So there you go. All right, I got time for one more question, if you would, Joel. Uh, no, I don't want to do one more question. I want to right, go good. and eat my dinner. We ha- we still have a lot of questions from Twitter. Again, I'm saving them. Next week, there's not going to be much to talk about. There'll be the uh, New Japan Cup final USA. Those two singles matches and I guess we will preview Satsuma no Kuni. So hopefully we'll, be, we'll have time to get to them then. Uh, so 
Manscaped.com, promo code JCAST. Do it to uh, get your, your discount and your free shipping for all those goodies, uh, as Damon outlined earlier. Uh, redcircle.com forward slash those forward slash super dash J dash cast. If you want to throw some money, I won't get a shout out on the show. Discord link is also in the show notes. And at Cobra Kawaii, pro wrestlingtees.com forward slash super JCAST if you want to buy one of our t shirts. And thanks as always to Editor Dan. Find him on Twitter at LousyHero219. Subscribe to the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network for other great shows. Give us a five snake review and some kind words on iTunes to help us uh, move up those charts. Follow us on Twitter at the SuperJCast. Thank you everyone for listening and goodbye. Yeah.